Close your eyes, and for just a moment, I want you to imagine yourself in the role that you're in. If you're a leader, if you're an executive, if you're a manager, team leader, whatever that is, and I want you to imagine coming into work, and everybody you see is happy, and smiling, and all the operations and systems are working correctly. Everybody's on time. There seem to be no problems, and it seems as though you have a louder quote voice than you did before. You've created a culture surrounding empathy and power. Okay, open your eyes. What would that be like? What did that feel like? Because you can have it with the business of empathy. What is the business of empathy? Well, it's a good question. And for a couple of years, several years, I campaigned against it. The whole concept that empathy can be a skill, that you can translate empathy into a transactional financial negotiation. But guess what? You can. You don't have to be a natural empath. You don't have to not be a natural empath to lead a culture of empathy. It's about cognitive restructuring. It's about your brain and neuroscience. The cognitive part of your brain is where you develop skills. And the skill of empathy is simple. It's acknowledgement listening and curiosity that's it acknowledging listening and curiosity acknowledge the person's reality listen listen for the message don't just plan in your head what you're gonna say as soon as there's a period at the end of a statement and be curious questions are not invasive questions are not offensive questions show interest and they provide clarity of information the author of the book How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie said back in the 30s that organizations and companies' biggest problems revolve around miscommunication.